welcome, bienvenidos. This is going to be an English message, va a ser un mensaje en inglés. Bienvenidos a todo nuestro público de habla hispana, que habla en inglés, español. God bless you, welcome, you're watching Gospel Kingdom TV, Evangelio Reino TV, and this is the program from Ruin to Restoration de la Ruina. A la restauración. Well, we might go bilingual. I don't know if we have time to go bilingual, no, but podemos hacer el intento, una que otra palabra, según nos dirija el Espíritu Santo. Bueno, como ya nos conocen, somos los pastores Michael y Rocío González. Acabamos de ser bendecidos por mi querida esposa, la pastora Rocío. We will just bless a little while ago with three, three-part message from my beloved wife. What a beautiful, beautiful message. Amen, amen. Well, without further ado, if you have your Bibles, I would like you to open up your Bibles to 2 Corinthians, the uh, fifth chapter, and I want you to place your finger there. So I'm not going to give you the actual verse that I'm going to be reading yet. I'd like you to bear with me because I want to do something a little different. Normally we pray right before we go on the air, but I'd like to pray with you right now, live. Amen? Amen. So let's bow our heads and let's go before the Lord in prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace and mercy on this beautiful day that you have made. And Father, we ask you that they see not man, that they see not us, that those that are watching, Father God, are not distracted by the uh, objects they see, by what we're wearing and, and how we're speaking and, and how our hair looks, but that they would focus on your word today. We believe, God, that you place this word in our hearts, in our mind, and in our spirit for such a time of this. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Yeshua, we ask you that you magnify yourself, Father God, that you glorify yourself through this message. And, Father, open up ears, open up minds, open up hearts, and open up spirits that they may receive your word today. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. and amen. 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 Woo. Hallelujah. Thank you to be with us. Uh, we're going to do this program in English, and uh, maybe in the future we're going to do it in Spanish. We could. We could do that. We can go fully in Spanish. And I spoke about this very subject in Espanol already. Ya hablé de la reconciliación. But today I have a very special message for you. Um, some of you have been uh, viewing the videos that I've been posting. Uh, thank God for technology. And God is steering us to really... Uh, go that route, you know, uh, videos, pictures, speak a thousand, ten thousand words, and we think that if properly used, um, technology in the hands of a saint can be a powerful, powerful tool. Amen? Amen. Well, I don't know if you heard of her before, honey, but I want to share a little bit about a beautiful, wonderful lady, a woman of God by the name of Eva Moses Court. Eva Moses Kaur, born January 31st, 1934, was a Romanian-born Jewish survivor of the Holocaust, who, along with her twin sister Miriam, suffered the atrocities of uh, the concentration camp. She and her sister Miriam were subjected to human experimentation under the direction of Nazi doctor Joseph Mengele, the infamous, in the infamous Nazi concentration camp Auschwitz. Say that with me, Auschwitz. Auschwitz, a very well-known concentration camp in occupied Germany, rather occupied Poland during World War II. Hey, shh, quiet in the set. I did that on purpose because whenever you have a word of God, Satan is going to try to interrupt. And he will use anything to try to interrupt. Even if it's your own pets, a family member, or a distraction. Amen? Amen. 
Now, the Auschwitz death camp, many of you are familiar with the Auschwitz death camp, was located in occupied Poland during World War II. Eva and her sister Miriam uh, were taken into that con concentration camp, but Eva's parents and her two older sisters were killed in the gas chambers at Birkenau concentration camp. And only she and Miriam survived. She and Miriam were twins. Now, Eva founded the organization Candles. And Candles is an acronym for Children of Auschwitz Nazi Deadly Laboratory Experiment Survivors. That's a mouthful. Let me say that again. Candles, children of Auschwitz, Nazi deadly lab experiment survivors. And in 1984, Eva, through this program and her organization, located an additional 122 survivors of the Nazi criminal doctor known as Joseph Mengele. One day I'm going to do a message on him because I think it is very appropriate uh, regarding the evilness of the heart of man. In 1984, after uh, Cora, after Eva had founded this organi organization, she met another man named Hans Munch. Hans Munch was another sadistic Nazi doctor in Auschwitz. And Eva received international recognition when she publicly, now listen to this folks, this is a child who was subjected to the horrors of experimentation on her body, on her mind, at the death camp known as Auschwitz at the hands of perhaps one of the most sadistic Nazi doctors to ever have existed during the era of World War II, Joseph Mengele. And after all that she had been through, Eva decided, now listen, are you sitting down? She decided to forgive the Nazis for what they had done to her. Listen folks, if you spend your childhood in a concentration camp during World War II, I'm going to say and I'm going to dare to say that very likely forgiveness was the furthest thing for your mind. She lost her parents and her two older sisters and she and her twin sister were guinea pigs of the Nazi criminal known as Josef, Joseph Mengele. But they survived. And years later, Eva forgave the Nazis for what they have done to her. I don't know if you've ever been hurt by someone. I don't know if you've ever been abused by someone tortured by someone. Perhaps I'm speaking to someone had, that has been sexually abused and tortured. Perhaps I'm speaking to a, um, a victim who has been prostituted. A victim who has been victimized beyond repair. You've been traumatized. And that happened maybe 10, 15, 20, 30, 50, or 60 years ago. But you still remember. You still remember as it was yesterday. And there's nothing, nothing that anyone can tell you that can cause you to forget the horror of your suffering. Such was a person named Eva Kor and her sister, 
Miriam. Yet Eva decided to forgive the Nazis for what they have done to her. When many of the other uh, Holocaust survivors, honey, harshly reprimanded her decision and basically yelling at her, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? What do you mean forgive the Nazis? We should kill them! Thank God they all died in the trial, after the trial of Nuremberg. What is wrong with you, Eva? How can you forgive that monster? How can you forgive those demons known as the Nazis? How can you do that to us? You want to know what Eva said? Yes. This is what Eva said, and it's in her book, and I would, uh, if there's time, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the link to her website. I, speaking, Eva saying this, I chose to go with the idea of peace. If peace and forgiveness does not work for the world, at least I am at peace. Eva Kor made the conscious decision to forgive because she wanted to reconcile. Above all things, above all the suffering, above all the pain and the horror that she went through, the greatest achievement, the greatest thing that she wanted was to reconcile. And not because it was going to make the world happy. Not because there were demands on her to reconcile. Listen, no one dares to tell a child survivor of the Holocaust, you should forgive. How even dare we ask a child of the Holocaust, you should forgive the Nazis. Yes. That is an insult. But we know as believers, we must forgive. We must, we must forgive. Eva Korn did what Jesus would have done. She forgave. And it's something you and I must do. Forgive others their sin and you shall be forgiven. As difficult, as harsh, and as even as horrible as that can be for some of us, I know I've been through horrific stuff that I don't have the freedom to speak because those people are still alive. But I, one day, if God, if it's God's will, and my testimony will honor Him, I will share some of the stuff that I and my wife as well went through. Eva Kor made a conscious decision to forgive even if it caused a worldwide scandal. I chose to go with the idea of peace. If peace and forgiveness does not work for the world, at least I am at peace. A conscious decision to forgive. A conscious decision to reconcile. Absolutely Marvelous. shocking, shocking, shocking to its core. I don't know how many of you folks out there have ever studied the horrors of Second World War. The horror, the horrors of the Nazi death machine and the death camps like Auschwitz and Birkenau and other camps. It was nothing short of hell on earth. In fact, I invite you and I encourage you 
to look into what really happened in Auschwitz. And you know, moving forward a little bit, honey, a few decades later, in 2015, uh, German Chancellor Merkel, Angela Merkel, the Chancellor, the President of Germany, current President of Germany, uh, visited Japan. Uh, it was her first trip to the Japanese country in seven years. And she met with Abu, uh, Shinsu Abe, excuse me, you know, the Prime Minister of Japan, and they met regarding climate change, uh, terrorism, uh, you know, economy, so forth and so on, and free trade in the summer, uh, the summer, that summer's uh, G7 summit. They had lots to talk about. That was her intention to talk about the economy, to talk about climate change, terrorism, and free trade. Well, during her two-day visit, uh, Chancellor Merkel's visit in Japan, she brought up how her country, Germany, rehabilitated its international reputation after World War II. Now listen, listen where she's going with this. She mentioned not in one occasion, but several occasions, how her country, Germany, had rehabilitated. Not moved forward, not changed its path, rehabilitated its international reputation after World War II. By, listen, are you listening? Reconciling with Nazi victims and acknowledging the atrocities of the German Nazi war machine and all they had committed. In other words, she was basically telling President Abe Shinsu, we know how horrific and how horrible and how diabolical we were. But we chose to reconcile by choosing to ask the world for forgiveness. And the world, my friend, most of us, accepted their forgiveness. And Germany set a compass. They set a path and a journey to reconciliation restoration and rehabilitation. Who would have ever thought that Germany would even survive the following 10 years after World War II? I, I'm going to dare to say that the world probably wanted to exterminate Germany. There was millions of people that desired nothing more than the, the complete extermination of the criminal death camps along with its perpetrators, the Nazis and the German war machine of that era. At the event, Merkel brought up this conversation several times. And in, in Tokyo, Merkel referred while in visit with uh, Japan, she, she mentioned and referred to uh, 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 Prime Minister Shinzo Abe a, a 1985 speech by, uh, by at that time, uh, uh, West German President Richard von Weizsäcker who called Germany, listen to this, Germany's wartime defeat, President Richard Weizsäcker, the president of Germany at that time, called Germany's defeat in, in World War II a day of liberation. Listen to the contradiction of that. We lost the war, but it was a day of liberation for us. We lost the war, but it was a day of liberation. 
Liberation from what? Liberation from the Nazi criminal machine. Liber liberation from the spirit of Antichrist himself who murdered millions and millions of people, not only Jews, but millions of people. And the president <coughs> in the 80s, the president of Germany said, we celebrate our defeat as a day of liberation. You see, the German people were slaves of the devil. The whole country became permeated with the cancerous evil of exterminating another race for the sakes of their dominance throughout the world. How evil can you get? And Eva and Miriam were victims of those horrific events. In the speech that German Chancellor of the 1980s, the Chancellor of Germany gave, he mentioned a few things, but I'm going to read to you just a small part of what President uh, Rich, uh, Richard von Weizsäcker's speech sounded like in 1985. Bear with me. We Germans will never forget the hand of reconciliation that was extended to us after all the suffering that our country brought on Europe, the Jews, and the whole world. Listen, it takes a big, big man to say we were wrong. We were horrible. We did wrong and we deserve to die. We deserve to lose that war. We deserve everything that happened to us. But we appreciate, we now appreciate the hand of reconciliation that has been extended to us. God extends a hand of reconciliation no matter what evil you have done. You think you're too far? You think you're beyond the mercy of God? You think that there's you did so many horrible things that God will not forgive you? You've fallen too many times? Maybe you're a pastor and you backslid over and over and over and over and over and over again. In fact, most of your friends already gave you up. They chalked you up as a loser. You might be known as the community hypocrite. People lost faith in you. They don't believe in your calling anymore. They call you a whack. A wacko. God extends reconciliation. And I want you, my friend, to stay tuned to part two of this message because it's only going to get better. But before we leave the air, I want to give you an opportunity now because I don't know if you're going to tune in. The next half hour, 30 minutes to an hour. We don't know how long this is going to take. But I want to extend an opportunity to you right now, my friend, to reconcile with the Lord. You've been far away. Maybe you've been angry at God. God has to stop loving you. You can be as angry with God as you want. God still extends a hand of reconciliation. Repeat after me. Almighty God. Forgive me. I have been wrong. I have done what is evil in your sight. But today, I want to reconcile with you, mighty God. Jesus, forgive me for my sins, for my iniquity, and all my wrongdoing. Wash me with your precious blood, almighty Lord. Cleanse me and write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. For in your name I pray. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. If you make that decision, you are a new, a new, a new person, creation. A new creation in God. 
We believe in with you. We are family now. And please turn, turn, uh, please follow us. Stay tuned for part two of this message called Reconciliation. Till then, we'll see you in five minutes. God bless you. Thank you so much.